What do I have going on here? Well, I need a fan to cool some things in a little compartment. So, I took apart this old one that's broken. I have this little circuit board, and it's broken. And the reason why it's broken is because it used to use micro USB for the power input. Unfortunately, though, I it's micro USB. So I tried to replace it with a better one, but I didn't solder it very good, obviously, and it broke. That was when I was younger. So now we have a new board coming in. This is where the batteries sit. They use these 3.7, 8.14 watt hour cells. It's going to be plugged in basically the entire time into a USB-C to USB-A outlet. The fan has an LED and it has power. That's pretty much it. This button right here regulates the power. Now I am going to reuse this board because everything on it works except for the charging port right here. I've already tested it. If these batteries are charged and it goes into these inputs, then it will power the fan. And I need this to control the fan speed. So I'm going to have this board as well as another board inside of here. So what is this mysterious other board? Well, let me introduce you to it. It is this one right here. And this Amazon board is pretty cool. So I'll leave a link to this in the description below the like button, but let's look at a little diagram of it right here. We have the type C USB charging mouth right here. Remember, this is always going to be plugged in. We have these inputs as well, which I'm not going to use. And then we have B plus and B minus. These are for the batteries. If I ever did want to hook anything up, we also have this output positive and this output negative on the right. I'm gonna throw up a picture of the mini fan on the screen. The input voltage voltage is 5 volts, the power is 6 watts, the working voltage of the motor is going to be between 5 volts to 14 volts, and the motor working current is going to be between 0.2 amps and 1.5 amps. All voltages and currents are variants, so it's nice that they have a range that makes it super realistic. I'm powering it off a USB type A, so the input voltage is going to be 5 volts and the output voltage is going to be 5 volts, so this board from the two terminals that we're wiring are going to output five volts, which is perfect because the input of the mini fan is five volts. Scrolling down a little bit, I can see that the board outputs one amp as well, which is perfect for the motor working current. So let's start wiring. So you can see the connectors coming out of the fan. I put them back in the board. The white ones are for the LED, the red and black are for power. And then I have these two female jumper cables going into the male ports of the board. They're gonna come out and they're going to go to the new board whenever it gets here. I'll test it for a while, for a long time to make sure everything runs good, and then I'll solder them on completely. Remember how I said working current earlier? Let's actually flip this around. Okay, I took it off, I forgot about that. Let's look at the sticker. Sticker says, oh, okay, the sticker's upside down. The sticker says motor working current 0.2 amps to 1.5 amps. Now there's a problem with that. The initial current draw is over the one amps that this board can support. So basically what I'm saying is you can see how it's powered on right now, right? And the light works. So if I press this button for the light, boom, it's doing fine. The USB, it's pulling the watts, it's, everything is fine, right? But if I start the motor, so that's this one, look at this, it just stutters. And the reason for that is because the initial current draw is over one amp. So we need a battery to be hooked up to this. Now, I believe we can either do this two ways. We can have the battery hooked up to here. And so I thought, what the heck, let's just test it. So you can see that the battery is hooked up through these leads. It goes into the breadboard and out into this top one right here, which does have battery in it. There's one in the top and the bottom. So let's try the top first going straight into this board. Let's do the power on and it doesn't spin. So I guess we can't go straight into this board with the power option from here. So this is gonna to be totally out of the picture. We're not gonna be able to use that anymore. Let's instead look back to here. So you can see I used the original connector and I soldered it to the out negative and then the out positive. That's going to be the ground and the power. So let's take these two wires and tap them into here. You can already see that I pre-soldered the little points right there. And so off camera, I tried this with these two connectors going to here and for some reason it has to go through this wire i don't know why but it might have to do something with this i'm not 100 percent sure when i connect these two to here it won't power but when i connect these two it t totally powers the fan just fine so let's actually try something connecting this straight to that you can see i connected it with the original connector now and it goes to red meaning it's charging this battery let's try to turn it on and boom, it turns on. And it seems like this is charging the battery. So if I wanted to, 
Um, I guess what I could do is instead of using the original connector here, I could use the original connector here and then put these two to here and then put the outputs to something like this right there. But it works just fine for now. I only need one battery to power this because it's going to be pulling from the USB for the rest of the time. You can see the USB output is 3.4 watts, so it's charging this battery right here. And I can prove that by if I take this lower one out, which it's powering off of, you can see it is now zero watts, not charging, and that went to blue. So let's close this up, solder everything together, and call it a day. What we're gonna do here is basically just tie everything together. So you see how I have those two, or if you remember those two jumper cables that are coming out of the other battery terminal? I know I could desolder them, but I'm just going to leave them there and electrical tape them down in case I ever do want to add another battery in the future. So I'm going to put all the electronics through the fan base, screw everything down, wire it together, and so the fan itself is good. From here, I need to find a way to fit that little second board on or in or on the fan because this fan was not made to have another board in it. And I understand I could just like expand the standoffs and then 3D print a little shelf for the excess and the new base and the whole thing, but it doesn't matter. I don't really care. I am just going to use a drill and a pair of pliers to cut a hole in the outer shell, and then I'm just going to wire it out. And no one's going to say anything to me because it's going to be in the sub trunk of my Tesla. Go check it out on my other channel, Tesla FPV. It's in the description below the like button. It's going to be cooling a bunch of accessories. I'll use some hot glue to cover up the hole and adhere the wires to the frame of the fan. And then all I need to do is plug in the USB cable, the cable, and then all I need to do is plug in the USB cable and then take it out to my car. It'll just forever be on in the low power state. That's all.